Um, first, I've got to say, I'm an absolute, unashamed, conservative knithead. And, oh, oh, that's um, nice. I think that um, Americans have been dreaming of having a competent, upstanding businessman in the White House for the last 60 years, and we finally have a chance. And uh, if we miss it, I, I worry about um, the future of the country for my little girl Penny here. Um, but I was wondering if uh, you could maybe speak to an experience, maybe uh, in your service with your church, or in your private, in the private sector, or as a governor, an event or experience that really kind of changed your perspective or your worldview, or kind of fundamentally changed the way you view the situation. Well, I, I will. Uh, I'll tell you one that uh, um, it's not one that you all have, but you see these Mormon missionaries that drive around in their bicycles with the little uh, tags on their on their shirt. Uh, and, uh, you know, I grew up in a, in a home with a great deal of affluence. My, my parents had done very well. My dad had grown up poor. He wanted us to, to work hard. But, I, but as an American, I had everything I needed. And, um, and, and I was asked to go out by my church to go live in France. Now, France is not exactly a third world country, obviously. Uh, but but what, when we go there, we live on our own savings, and they had a limit. We were able to receive, I think it was $110 a month from our savings. Now, that would be the equivalent today, because this was back in... Uh, the, the, the late 1960s, that would be equivalent to maybe five or six hundred dollars a month in today's dollars. And, uh, and with that, we had to buy our clothing, our food, our rent, uh, virtually everything we had. Our transportation all came out of about five or six hundred dollars a month. So you know you're not living high on the hog at that kind of level. And so I lived, I lived with people in France who lived very modestly. The, the, uh, a number of the apartments I lived in when I was there didn't have toilets. We had instead the you know little pads on the ground. Yeah, okay, you know how that works, all right? Pull, pull the, there was a chain behind you with kind of a bucket, the bucket affair. I had not experienced one of those in the United States. Uh, most of the apartments I lived in had no had no refrigerators. I don't actually recall any of them having a refrigerator that we shopped before every meal. Um, uh, most of the apartments I lived in had no shower or bathtub. Uh, in, in some cases, we would, there, there were buildings that had showers. You'd go and you'd pay a couple of francs, and you could get a shower. We'd do that once a week. Or, if we were lucky, we, we actually bought a hose and stuck it on the, on the sink, and we'd hold there with a hose and a big bucket, a big uh, tub behind, underneath us. We'd put in the kitchen and, and wash ourselves that way. And so, I, I lived in a way that the people of, of lower middle income in, in France lived, and I said to myself, wow, I sure am lucky to be born in the United States of America. And uh, I began to appreciate the freedoms and the, uh, uh, and the gifts that, that come by, by virtue of having been in this country. I, I said to myself, gosh, going to school is kind of important. And getting as much education as I can and doing as well as I can is important. That, that changed my perspective. I, uh, before that, school was sort of something that, you know, I, was sort of fun to do. And, and uh, everybody was wanting to go to college. And isn't that a fun thing? And college is a lot of fun. When I, when I came home after being there for two and a half years, I, I was looking forward to getting an education so that I could... I could lift my family and, and recognize that what I was doing had, had long-term implications. It was a wake-up experience for me. I was 19 years old. I came back. I was 21, 21 and a half or so. And, and uh, on, on the car ride home from the airport, when I, was at, when I arrived at the airport, uh, my family was there. My mom and dad, um, my sister, a few other people I can't remember, but my girlfriend was also there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, she was there to welcome me home. And we got in the very back row of the car and drove, uh, drove home. And on the, on the ride back, I turned to her and I said, you know, I, I just feel the same about you as I did two and a half years ago when I left. She said, I feel the same about you. I said, do we want to get married? She said, yeah. Uh, so when we got home, we told our parents we were going to get married in a, in a couple of weeks. They weren't wild about that idea. They held it off for three months, but we didn't get married. And I became much more serious about my life, about education, about the person I would settle with, about raising a family. Uh, it, it matured me in great ways. 